We are the beer amigos. We like beer. We are amigos. And that's why we call ourselves the beer amigos. We are the beer amigos. We are amigos, and that's why we call ourselves the Beer Amigos. The Beer Amigos. Greetings, this is Joe Churchy with Starfish Junction Productions, and I wanted to talk to everyone about something that affects us all here on Long Island. Long Island Craft Beer Week. <laughs> Starting May 11th through the 20th, the second annual Long Island Craft Beer Week will be taking place. Long Island Craft Beer Week celebrates the craft beer culture here on Long Island, and here are a few of the great events that we have lined up. The week kicks off on Friday, May 11th at Tap and Barrel with the Long Island Craft Beer Week kickoff party with Blue Point Brewing Company. Saturday, May 12th is shaping up to be quite a day. Wake up early and head down to the Cortland to have breakfast with the Beer Amigos. We Your two favorite sombrero-wearing podcasting friends will be holding amigos. court at the Cortland with special we breakfast like burritos beer. from Bubba's Burrito Bar in Islip. When that's over, guess what? There will be a cask ale festival within walking distance at TJ Finley's. TJ Finley's is having their Cask Ale Festival featuring 10 cask ales, so mosey on over and spend a day in Bayshore. On Monday, May 14th, the second annual Simulcask, that's right, I said Simulcask, will be taking place across Long Island. The Long Ireland Beer Company and Blind Bat Brewery will be tapping a special collaboration beer at four select locations throughout Nassau and Suffolk County. The Black Sheep Ale House in Mineola, the Cortland and Bayshore and Tap and Barrel will be amongst the participants. Come down and see where debauchery takes place. There will be video taken at each tapping and remixed into a montage. Montage! On uh, May 15th is the Golden Tap Awards Gala taking place at the Bolton Center in Bayshore. We will be honoring Long Island's beer innovators and pioneers. The first of its kind award show and the only one of its type. These awards are for the people, by the people. Some of the categories you can vote on are Best Beer Bar on Long Island, Beer of the Year, and Best New Beer of 2011. Voting is currently open until May 7 to the public now at GoldenTap.com. That's Golden-Tap.com. Every vote counts, and you will be the only one to blame if your favorites do not win. At the Golden Tap Awards Gala, we will be honoring Steve Hindy, co-founder and president of Brooklyn Brewery, with the Lifetime Achievement Award. Brooklyn Brewery is approaching their 25th anniversary and continues to be a force in the craft beer industry. Tickets are available to the general public through the Bolton Center box office. Our host this year is a familiar face to the Long Island craft beer scene, Tim Saliani. If you would like more information on any of these events or other festivities taking place during the week, please go to longislandcraftbeerweek.com. And let's be honest, who doesn't like festivities? The second annual Long Island Craft Beer Week promises to create some great memories that we will always try to remember. Thank you for your time. On this episode of the Beer Amigos, we head to the 8th annual Blue Point Cascales Festival. We talk about the upcoming Long Island Craft Beer Week and our breakfast with the Beer Amigos event on Saturday, May 12th at 10 a.m. at the Cortland. We check in with Matt and Lori Spitz from Mustache Brewing. We drink beers and sing a song for Great South Bay Brewery and much, much more. Hey, this is Travis. And this is Mike. And we are the Beer Amigos! Episode 9! I'm feeling fine. So fine. Oh yeah. So we are back. It's uh, been a few weeks. 
We've been doing a lot, uh, beer related. Like drinking beer? Drinking beer. I've gone on some trips. Mike is about to go on a trip. Yeah, man. Trips are great. You're it's perfect the... trip season. And Mike told me his trip is going to consist of getting a $15 massage and learning how to cook beef jerky. Yeah, I'm going to learn the craft of making beef jerky so I can bring back that skill set and share it with the local community. <laughs> Most people do go on vacations to learn how to make beef jerky. so Naturally. You're one in a million, Mike. One in a million. Hey, man, you know, we got to learn something new every day. <laughs> that's what my mom told me when I was little. Got to learn. That's, that's nice that you're taking, you know, what you learned in your youth and you're, you're taking it with you yeah. through as you mature. It's great wisdom. Yeah. <laughs> wisdom has been bestowed upon Michael Howland. She used to maybe call her Obi Mom. I was like, what's up with that? <laughs> Obi Mom? <laughs> yeah, because she has all the wisdom. All, all right. right. Anyway, Trev, anyway. Tell, tell everyone about your trip. My trip. I always feel like I'm going on trips, and that's that's a good thing, I guess. Uh, apparently, you get too much time off at work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, we, no. Only, we only Travis's job, apparently. <laughs> if, if anyone from my job is listening, I, I work hard uh, day in and day out. <laughs> They're like, why does Travis always bang out sick on Fridays and subsequently on Monday? <laughs> Well, this time I left on a Thursday. <laughs> oh, <laughs> naturally, because you, you figured you'd get a head start, call out on Friday from your <laughs> yeah. destination, yeah, and go ex- from there. So on uh, April 5th, my wife, Melissa, and I, we packed our bags and we headed to Rehoboth Beach, Delaware, which is the home of Dogfish Head Craft Brewed Ales' Brew Pub. But our first stop on the trip was actually in Milton, Delaware, which is where Dogfish Head's brewery is located. And as most people know, Dogfish Head was founded by Sam Calagione in 1995. And I think they produce uh, around 75,000 barrels of beer a year. And And increasing. And increasing at a a significant rate. I had visited both the brewery and the brew pub before, but was, uh, you know, I was just as excited to, you know, visit this time around. You, uh, you gotta go, Mike. Gotta, I definitely do have to go. Got to head out there. So, <laughs> what, this was a romantical escape, though. It for... wasn't. Yeah, exactly. And and there was no room for uh, Mr. Michael Helland. <laughs> <laughs> when we arrived, uh, we first went on the guided tour, which included uh, sights and explanations of the brew house, cellars, and the bottling line. And uh, being a full time dogfish head beer geek, uh, most of the information that they shared to me was already known. It was old news to uh, your boy Travi, but uh, <laughs> it's always nice to go, you know, behind the scenes at a brewery uh, which brews on such a large scale. Um, after the tour and drinking uh, the beer samples, which followed the tour, we got back in the car and we drove to sunny Rehoboth Beach. We stayed at the Crosswinds Motel, uh, which was literally a twenty-second walk from Dogfish Head's brew pub. What was your room number? Room number. I think it was three hundred nine. Three hundred nine. Yeah, yeah. Good number. Having a 20-second walk to Dogfish Head's brew pub is uh, it's quite magical. Yeah, it's, it's kind of unfortunate when you're at work and, you know, I'm like, oh, I'm on my break. Let me check my Facebook feed. <laughs> oh, there, there's Travis and his wife literally, like, a foot away from I, where I'd like to be. But I did bring you home beer. You did. And Dogfish Head's beer is significantly cheaper at their brewery and brew pub and in the state of Delaware. And there's no sales tax. Is that, is that truth or myth? It's truth. We talk about, <laughs> is this like an episode of Mythbusters? <laughs> Plausible. <laughs> Plausible. So yeah, so we spent uh, April 5th. I just had a visual of Matt Spitz from the Mustache Brewing Company when I, <laughs> when I said plausible. He should be on that show. He he'd be, he'd be a I'm not... sure he's heard that a million times. <laughs> he'd be a staple part it's of old the news. show Mythbusters. <laughs> he auditioned, but his mustache was far too great compared <laughs> to theirs. So we stayed through the 8th, but uh, on the 5th, 6th, and 7th. We spent uh, many hours drinking and eating at the brew pub, as expected. Uh, their food is top-notch, and uh, their beer is extremely top-notch. I think it might sound a bit dull, but my favorite pint of beer that I had that entire weekend was their 60-minute IPA. Their 60-minute is their, you know, it's their sessionable IPA, which is continually hopped with uh, more than 60 hop additions over a 60-minute boil. Super powerful but balanced East Coast IPA with lots of citrusy hop characters. Besides it being a great beer, I think the main reason I enjoyed it so much is because I got to the brew pub and realized I had had not had that beer in at least a year, year and a half. It was one of the first Dogfish Head beers I had years ago, but I have not revisited it recently. And I can tell you there's nothing better than a completely fresh draft of 60-minute IPA from where it's actually brewed. It was great. That's nice. It was when... so good. 
when uh when it meets you know it lives up to your previous expectations because there's always that possibility of it, like exactly coming back to it and being like this is kind yeah. of mediocre and i feel like again i feel like that's so dull to say i think my favorite pint of beer was the 60 minute ipa because i had their burton baton i had their hellhound i had their had their namaste i had brew pub exclusive beers the list goes on and on but just having that fresh 60 minute ipa on tap that i hadn't had in so long it just really stuck out in my mind. But I think that says a lot for a brewery like that, that, you know, is, is so, like, extreme in, in making, you know, um, extreme centered ales. Yeah, for centered people. But um, where you can enjoy, you know, something as simple as their their IPA and really appreciate And their that. most tame of their IPAs, especially. I mean, that says a lot in, in regards to them, you know, almost, it's almost like a, from a culinary standpoint, being able to, to hold back, like, show some restraint. Instead of just, you know, going for the kill and overpowering stuff. Because, you know, I mean, I feel like the issue a lot of times is, you, you know, people try to overdo it and add too many ingredients. Mm-hmm. And then you almost lose some of that luster instead of just mastering, you know, the art and craft of, of minimalism, for a, you know, in a sense. So um, is there any, like, brew pub exclusives that you remembered having that you enjoyed? Yeah, I had two of the Brewpub uh, exclusive beers. I had their Big S Triple, which is a Belgian triple uh, full of tropical fruit flavors. It's fully organic. How was that? It was okay. Uh, it wasn't one of my favorites. Again, I know their Brewpub exclusive beers are strictly to test new recipes, which I think is obviously extremely smart. You know, Rather than saying, I think this is going to work, let's bottle it, let's, <laughs> let's put all this money behind it, let's distribute it, they try it at the Brewpub. Um, I'm intrigued by the idea of it, though. Yeah, it's yes. The idea I mean, of it was very good, and I, 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 I was actually attracted to the fact that it was all organic ingredients. That's not something you always read, in uh, for, with you know, in respect to beers. Um, but it I was, mean, I'm sorry, go ahead. It was, it was just way too overly sweet. But I feel like you know me. when you see breweries like the founders, you know, founders with the the, the success they've had with Blushing Monk. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a sweeter, you know, a sweeter Belgian, and, and right. you can't help but be inspired to be like, all right, you know, like let's do something like that, but. You know, make it super exotic instead of just using like raspberries. Yeah, I, I definitely think the idea behind it uh, was perfect. It just, you know, maybe it's something they're gonna tweak a little bit, yeah, in, you know, in the future. Um, a buddy of mine. But who better than t- to give you feedback than the people that are gonna ultimately exactly, buy it? exactly. And uh, a buddy of me and my wife's was actually there, and he had it, and he enjoyed it more than me. It was just it was wait, just... you invited someone else with, with you on your trip? <laughs> Mike, he actually lives in Delaware. Oh, okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> what I did have, which I enjoyed, uh, was their brew pub exclusive beer called Mahatma. Their description is curry and golden raisins add sweet spice to this malty Indian food inspired brew. Enjoy the citrus finish as it complements the malt spice notes. That like that description right there is totally like the traditional dogfish head wheelhouse. Yeah, ex- of, exactly. Like, like like take this simple beer where we threw all this curry flavoring into it, but it was. I loved it. I, I wouldn't say it's a beer I would want to go, you know, grab a six pack of and, you know, have it scattered, you know, throughout a few weeks period of time. But, but uh, it was balanced. It was balanced so well and it was so easy to drink. And that curry flavoring wasn't, it didn't overpower the beer. It was just, you know, it was one of those simple, sessionable beers that was just, you know, slightly different than the norm to the point where it made it just gave you enough excitement to, uh, you know, just really want to finish and enjoy it for what it is. Nice. I, I did enjoy it. And those were the two uh, Brew Pub exclusive beers out of their four available ones that I did have. That's awesome. I'm, I know that in visiting the Dogfish site, um, Sam's really great at discussing you know, the thought processes behind going making beers and, and pairing it with food. And I think that's a really great you know, mentality and, and kind of like viewpoint in, in crafting your beers is thinking about like what it's best with and... He's amazing at, you know, elaborating on that in these brief videos on their website. Yeah. So if you haven't been to their website... I think they're um, called Quick Sips. Yeah, Quick just Sips, check it I out. I mean, it's called. like, you know, a minute and a half, two minute clips. <clears throat> but um, just he's so inspired by everything he makes. And it's really, like, infectious and, and definitely makes you want to try their beers. So. Yeah, and I, I agree, especially because it seems a lot of the beer community wants beer to be respected as much as wine is. And the wine community, I think a big part of what they do is mentioning why their wine is good with specific foods so i think it's definitely smart for brewing companies beer brewing companies to do the same to say why their product is good with food you mean everyone eats food every day (laughs) yeah so to to pinpoint why their specific product could go with what you're eating on a day-to-day basis yeah because i mean if you have the opportunity to enhance what you're having even more so why would you not exactly 
That's just a silly question. <laughs> well, again, uh, we've, we've been busy going to fun events along the Long Island. Yeah. This, <laughs> this island, which is long. This Long Island that we're from. So, Mike, where did we go to on uh, April 14th? We went to the 8th annual Blue Point Cask Ales Festival that took place at the Blue Point Brewery in Patchogue, New York. It's, this is one of my favorite like, you know, festivals. It's it's relatively small scale. It goes down right behind the brewery, and uh, it's just everyone's just in a jovial mood and just oh, pumped yeah. for the day. <laughs> exactly. So um, I think it's also because, in addition to it being great beers, I think the point that now it's in the spring and it's outdoors, and thankfully it's such warm weather. It's a combination of I'm so excited that I'm with great people, having great beer in a great area, but I'm also like realizing winter's behind us, the warm weather's coming, I'm feeling good. I think for, for I think for me it's like the start of summer, the Blue Point Cascales Festival. Because you, you know the odds of having a snowstorm are slim to none. Exactly. After that. Exactly. Just there's so much to look forward to. Agreed. So what in particular did you really enjoy about that day? Well, uh, what I'm realizing is not even beer wise, just in not general. even beer wise. I mean, obviously you <clears throat> can elaborate on any beers, yeah. but I know that we do have some interviews coming up. Yeah. Which we do discuss a few beers. So I think what excites me just as much as trying new beers is just, you know, meeting with your friends, you know, having another opportunity to enjoy each other's company and goof around and talk and hang out over, you know, delicious beers. To me, it's, to me, it's the, the community which surrounds the Long Island craft beer scene, which I think actually, which definitely, you know, means more to me than the delicious beer itself. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a great opportunity too for like, you know, kind of reiterating what we were saying earlier about Dogfish Head. Um, is that it really gives our local breweries a chance to kind of make these unique beers or, you know, do a variation of their traditional style beers where, um, you know, these attendees get to taste the freshest beer they've probably ever had or may not be acclimated to because, you know, cast conditioned beer, although it's becoming much more popular being served in pubs, a lot of places doing mm-hmm. firkins, still not something you're seeing, you know, every place right. you go. So. right. Um, it's, that's a great opportunity to really um, expand people's palates and just have fun with brewing, which is is really probably our one of our favorite parts about it. Oh, is, hands you know. down. And we had an opportunity to speak with a few people at the Cask Ales Festival, and we're going to play that footage for you right now. We are behind the Blue Point Brewery for this eighth annual Cask Ales Festival with Paul from the Blind Bat Brewery, located in Centerport, Long Island. That's in New York, folks. Paul, what did you bring today to pour for the uh, attendees of this event? Today, uh, we brought, uh, Corey's with me today, we brought the Hellsmoke Porter and the Belfie Brown. Nice. Can you tell us a little bit about each of those beers, if you don't mind? Yes, sir. Uh, the Hellsmoke Porter, uh, we smoke uh, ca- some of the barley over a combination of apple and alderwood at the brewery before we uh, brew with it. And otherwise, it's a robust porter at 5.7% ABV. The Belfie Brown is a... Um, I don't know what kind of brown it is. It's not an English brown. It's not really an American brown because it's not particularly hoppy. It uh, uses seven different malts, and we add grade B Vermont maple syrup to the fermenter after primary fermentation is done, and we drop off some of the yeast. So we're not trying to get more alcohol out of that. It actually kind of settles in and mellows and sits in the fermenter for a while into like a more of like a caramely kind of background note. Let me tell you what kind of brown it is. It's a delicious brown ale. Um, I was fortunate enough to have it at the Rocky Point Artisan Brewers Nano Cask Fest, and uh, it was one of my favorite beers there. Um, in addition to that, it will be getting my vote for the 2011 New Beer Golden Tap Award. Paul, I know that one of your beers was recently featured on the Martha Stewart Show, the Hell Smoke Porter. Um, that's got to be kind of cool. Just you know, tell us a little bit about that experience. And how uh, that well, it, it was it was fun since uh, Martha wouldn't go near it. She apparently was afraid of it because it was dark and smoky. Uh, very, very fortunate. Sam Calagione, Dogfish Head, if uh, no one knows who that is, which you're probably maybe three people who don't know who he is. Uh, very generous guy in the beer world. Very big about promoting all of craft beer, not just his own brand. And uh, he sent me an email along with a couple of other breweries, uh, FX Matt Upstate and um, uh, Firestone Walker out in California. Said, hey, hey dudes, I'm going to be on Martha Stewart. I want to bring some beer. Can you get some beer to the studio? So uh, I said, uh, expletive yes. And uh, so I drove in the beer, and there it was on TV, as seen on TV, Hellsmoke Porter. But when they got to it... Uh, 
You can see it online. It's it's fun because Martha's drinking a little bit of each one. Then she starts talking about Schaefer and Pabst Blue Ribbon for some reason while Sam's trying to talk about craft beer. And uh, and then she says, well, I like this one. Oh, this one's nice. Oh, no, I'm getting tipsy. And as soon as he poured the Hell Smoke pour, she goes, oh, no, no, I don't like that. <laughs> so, But she gave it to her camera guy or a producer or somebody off camera. He seemed to like it. Regardless, great you know, great fact that you're recognized on you know a, a nationally televised show. I think my, it's my awesome. Fi- my 15 minutes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's awesome. no. I, I don't think that's accurate. I think yeah. there's great things coming from you in the near future. I know that there's a lot going on um, with the Blind Bat Brewery um, today itself. This event is very reminiscent of that with Blue Point being one of the bigger local breweries, um, hosting the smaller the smaller breweries and other Long Island beers in general. Mm-hmm. And it's really a great opportunity to to explore new beers and, and essentially test them on people that are open-minded to craft beers in general. So, Paul, uh, we look forward to having your beer a little later, and uh, thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, bu- buenos dias. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. Mike and I are here with Steve from Barrage Brewing at the 8th Annual Blue Point Cask Ales Festival. Steve, can you tell us a little bit about the beer that you're pouring today? Sure, guys. Uh, we're pouring a One Ride Monkey, which is our Rye IPA, One Ride, plan words, One Eyed Monkey. Um, it's a Rye Ale. Close to a German Rogan beer. It's 4.8% alcohol, a little bit of caraway seed in it, Amarillo hops, nice session beer. Uh, I think you guys already tried it. What are you, what are you thinking on this? I was going to say, it's probably not a surprise that Mike and I already enjoyed the one ride. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Monkey. I usually hit the Barrage Brewery first, and uh, I really enjoyed this actually a lot. It was, it's like perfect beer for today. Yeah, it's kind of like a tradition for Mike and I. We go to. Uh, we visit Steve. <laughs> <laughs> hit, hit barrage first, and then <laughs> we, go to the others. But then we come back, though, because, you know... I like that. I like that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so we know that you, you you did disclose to us that you recently signed a contract for a building for your brewery. Yes, sir. Tell us a little bit about that process and where you're going to be. Please. Uh, right now, we're uh, just moving everything over to 32 Allen Boulevard in Farmingdale. Uh, right Farmingdale. Off, Farmingdale. Next stop, Farmingdale. <laughs> I like that. It almost sounds like being on a railroad. And the next stop is Farmingdale. Uh, yeah, we're right off of 110. Um, actually, right by the White Castle. So anybody wants to drink beers and... Has the Crave. Has the Crave. Could go over to White Castle. Or the Republic. Or the Republic, which is right down the road, which I'm digging really, really, really a lot. Yeah, um, yeah we're going to be... Uh, we're hoping, hoping uh, SLA approved. Uh, by the end of this year, all our equipment's going to be moving in real soon. We're actually doing floor work, getting all the drains in, uh, sealing the floor. Uh, it's a two-barrel system right now, uh, but we're hoping within a couple of years we'll be up to five-barrel. Um, what else is there to talk about besides the beer amigos and how handsome these young men are? <laughs> yeah, appreciate uh, no. that. And how much we enjoy Barrage's beer. Um, everything from that we've had from Barrage is amazing, and I'm really like genuinely ecstatic for this to happen for you. Like this next stage of the process, because I feel like you bring a lot to the table as a brewer, and as you know, like I feel like you know you you have like a great take on beer, and you're amazing at setting a benchmark on new styles of beer. And I feel like as you you know. As you have that momentum carrying into opening, I don't see anything but amazing things happening for you, and I'm super pumped about it because we just love talking to you in general, yes. and we love yes. your beers. So yeah, we as I told Steve before on the way to this festival, Mike and I actually were talking about how excited we were to try whatever Steve was offering uh, today. Uh, so uh, I appreciate that, guys. Uh, you are, I have to say, I, I love the beer amigos, and I think everyone should listen to their podcast <laughs> because whether Barrage is in it or not. It's excellent. These guys not only talk about great beers, but also it's just, you know, if you want to take a little bit of time out of your life to enjoy life, you have to listen to the Beer Amigos. And we rap sometimes. Uh, you know what? And if you don't haven't seen the video, the best part of the whole video is when Mike spins his sombrero <laughs> and Travis makes it rain. Oh, yeah. It makes it rain, baby. <laughs> also, uh, just to let everyone know, uh, we are going to be uh, making up new t-shirts for Barrage Brewing and on the back it's going to say Barrage Brewing the beer that does you dirty aka the beer amigos <laughs> amazing well obviously this is the spot to stay tuned in to find out more about Barrage in the future and we look forward to sharing you know the latest and greatest with you thanks again Steve uh, guys thank you so much and enjoy the beer enjoy the festival and uh, huzzah oh thanks Steve <laughs> 
We're here with Tim from the Empire Brewing Company at the Blue Point 8th Annual Cascales Festival. Tim, would you kind of tell us what, you brought, what you're pouring today? Uh, today we're pouring our Live and Let Rye. It's a, it's a, a rye IPA that I dry hopped with New York State grown uh, hops, magnum hops. When you when you announce that beer, though, don't you want it to be like, Live and Let Rye? Yeah, and, that, and that's where the name came from. People say, where would you get the name? We were, know that. we were stuck in traffic on the Brooklyn Bridge. We were going from the South Sea Streetport to Brooklyn. And uh, we were trying to think of the, a name for our beer, our new, our new Rye IPA that we we're releasing. And uh, so we're stuck in traffic. And, you know, everybody's got like a kind of a catchy name for their Rye IPAs. You know, there's, there's Ruthless, there's uh, Rye the Tiger, there's uh, Rastafari. Um, so we're like, we got a catchy name, whatever, you know, we're trying to think about it. And then the song came on and it was me and uh, my assistant, Olivia, and the owner of the company, David, were all in the car. And we all looked at each other and David looked at me and I looked at him and he said, Live and let rye, and I'm like, let's let's roll with it, man. Sing it to you though. Yeah. He said, live and let rye, bam, like, bam, yeah, live and let rye. Yeah. Now, but, now, but I gotta ask, was was the wings or Guns N' Roses? Say again. The wings or Guns N' Roses? Well, you know, my personal favorite of that tune, I hate to say it, is the Guns N' Roses. Guns N' Roses all the way. Yeah, yeah. me too. Gene Arp. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, wings is what it is, but I think Guns N' Roses made that song. Uh, relevant, I guess. Yeah. And today's actually the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction, and supposedly Axl Rose declined the invitation. Yeah, he shunned it. He shunned yeah, everyone. Axl Rose is a no-show, yeah. but and he said that he didn't want anyone to accept on, on his, his behalf, behalf either. Yeah. Which I don't know where he's going with that, but you know we're digressing into some rock and roll, which I'm which I'm cool with. Yeah, well I'm a big rock, a- rock and roll and beer go hand yeah. in hand. I'm a big '80s metal guy, whether it be Thrash and Megadeth or be hair metal and Molly oh, Crew. Dude, I love Megadeth. I love uh, Metallica is probably one of my favorite bands of all time. Yeah. And Guns N' Roses. I grew up on Guns N' Roses, and, and, and you know I hate to say, you know, I really liked back in the day when I was young. I liked Poison. Dude, I saw Poison last summer, man, at Jones Beach. And Warren. I love what, Cherry Pie, Dirty Ron, Filthy Stinking Rich. Yeah, man. Dude, I know 80s hair metal inside out. I listened to Skid Row Slave to the Grind on the way here. Dude, Sebastian Bach Dude, on man. Broadway. Man. You know what I'm saying? Man. But yeah, Slave to the Grind. I don't think it was their best. I think their first album was so their titled. best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sweet I Little Sister. I saw them open for uh, Bon Jovi in the Carrier Dome, Skid Row. And it was it was, awesome. it was awesome. It was awesome. I'm a little too young for that, unfortunately. We the endless smile. We are the youth god one. <laughs> 18 in life. <laughs> now, be, now, before we get back to beer, real quick, I gotta ask you: Do you like Steel Panther? You know Steel Panther? I don't. Dude, the most bitchin' metal band to come out of the scene in years. They're actually a comedy Steel band. Panther. Yeah, we'll talk about that on the side. We'll talk about that. So we'll, we'll we'll go back to beer right now. So for our listeners, where can they come and check out? The Empire Brewing Company. Well, you know, we're, we're with Manhattan Beer Distributors, and, uh, you know, Long Island, I feel, is, uh, I hate to use this pun, and it's not a pun, but it's an untapped market for us. Um, it, it's it's hard to spend time here. We're, we're a Syracuse-based company. Uh, we do a lot of beer in Manhattan and Brooklyn, so we're going to keep trying to work our way east and, and, and come out on the island. Right now, on Long Island, I don't know, I don't know where you can find it. Uh, if you look, we do have a beer finder on our website where you punch in your zip code and it'll show you where the, all the recent places that have had have it on tap. So it's empirebrew.com. You go to beer finder, you punch in your zip code, and they'll it'll it'll show you show you where it's closest to you at that point. And for our nomadic listeners that are willing to take the trip in, where are you? What's your address? Oh, in Syracuse, we're 120 Walton Street. We're upstate, and everybody thinks, you know, I, you know, I, I've been coming down here for many years. Everybody thinks upstate is anything north of 44th Street. You know, it's just like <laughs> upstate to us is Syracuse, New York, Central New York. That's where we are. It's 120 Walton Street, Syracuse, New York, and it's a great little town. If you guys want to come up and check out the pub? You guys are welcome anytime. I'll show you. I'll give you the red carpet. Any of the listeners that want to come out, say you heard me on uh, on the podcast. I'll buy them their first beer when they get there. Awesome, you heard it. Thanks for your interview, Tim. Definitely make it up there this summer. Make a trip out of it. And uh, cheers. 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 <laughs> hey, it's Paul from Ghost Cat Brewing, and you're listening to the Beer Amigos. 
As Mike mentioned, these beer festivals on Long Island are really good platforms for new brewing companies and, you know, older brewing companies to showcase new beer recipes for people who, you know, actually do want to taste the beer and and judge the beer and give feedback on the beer. Two of our friends, Matt and Lori Spitz, started Mustache Brewing Company recently. Lori runs the Long Island chapter of Girls Pint Out, and both Lori and Matt are members of Long Island Beer and Malt Enthusiasts. And Mike and I have had the pleasure of tasting their beers, both through Long Island Girls Pint Out and through Long Island Beer and Malt Enthusiasts, and we've been quite impressed, to say the least. Wouldn't you say, Mike? Yeah, absolutely. I I like their I like their style. Yeah, I like their style. <laughs> so, uh, so they're looking to take uh, their beer and their brewing to the next level, and they started Mustache Brewing Company, which they hope in, they hope to open sometime in the new uh, the near future. Recently, they made it public that they started a Kickstarter account, which is a website that helps fans raise money for a particular purpose, this purpose being Mustache Brewing Company. So they're looking to raise money for their brewing company. So we were, had the opportunity to speak with Matt and Lori about you know where they are with Mustache Brewing Company, and here they are. Hi, this is Lori Spitz. And this is Matthew Spitz. And we are Mustache Brewing Company. Yes, we are. Mustache Brewing Company is, um, we're a small microbrewery that's in the process of opening up on Long Island. Um, we're going to be about a 15-barrel uh, brew house, and we are going to make some awesome beers for the island. <laughs> That's the plan, anyway, yeah. Um, yeah, we're, we're going we're gonna to have a, um, a bunch of year-round beers. Uh, we're going to do a um, American Pale Ale uh, and an IPA. We're also going to do a, uh, a porter, which, which is going to be more of a session porter, uh, more of, um, you know, uh, more something that you can knock back all the time, and and uh, but still has a lot of roasty characters to it, um, and then also some kind of 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 London style ESB, something kind of British, something different that a lot of people on the island um, may not be used to. Um, yeah, and then we're gonna have some um, some seasonal stuff, of course. Um, you know, c- kind of keeping with that whole whole trend. And also we're going to have like have beers of the moment. So every other month or so we're just going to come out with a new beer. And, you know, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, some of the beers, um, you know, for our beers of the moment are going to be, you know, inspired by the time of year, the season, holidays, um, whatever's going on at the moment. Um, you know, so that should be really fun. It's going to be constantly changing. Um, you're only going to really be able to get them maybe once. Maybe we'll make them again. We don't know. Um, we're also planning on doing some special um, lines that we're going to bottle. Um, uh, Imperial lines and some uh, barrel-aged uh, series also. So that'll be pretty neat. Um, basically, we just want to make beers the kind of beers that we want to drink um which we believe is the beers that other people also want to drink so that kind of works out very well um so one of the uh biggest hurdles to us opening our doors right now is um financial um we need a little extra help to get us there there's um a lot of uh, red tape for us to cut through in the uh initial phase so in order for us to get licensed, we have to um, have our lease secured, and uh, we got to be paying rent on our on our brewery building. Um, and unfortunately, and have a brew system in place. Yes, and have the brew system in place. Um, unfortunately, though, while we're paying rent and waiting for our license, they do not allow us to make beer or sell beer, which is very unfortunate. Um, so there's going to be approximately six months, possibly longer, um, of us paying rent and not making a dime. Um, so to help us kind of get over that financial hurdle that's stopping us in the beginning, um, we started a Kickstarter campaign. And um, our Kickstarter campaign, um, you can find it on our website. It's uh, mustachebrewing.com. That's M O U S. T A C H E mustache, um, or you can just look us up on Facebook or Kickstarter, and 
basically the way Kickstarter works, it's crowdsourcing. So all our friends, our family, um, strangers, Beer Amigos podcast listeners um, can go on and um, you can back us. Um, it's just like the pledge drive on NPR or PBS. Um, there's all different rewards you can choose. We have lots of thing, cool things to choose from. Um, t-shirts, you can brew with us, cool bottle openers, um, all kinds of fun stuff. So definitely check that out. Um, you go on, you make your pledge. Um, and then on our deadline, which is um, May 23rd, if we do not reach our goal of $25,000, which we are well on our way so far, um, you do not get charged. Um, but when we do meet our goal on May 23rd, um, you will get a extremely happy email from us thanking you. And, um, we will put your rewards in the mail shortly after that. Um, and then hopefully in the coming months we will be open and then you can come visit and drink our beer and try our beer and tour our brewery and hang out with us. Um, yeah. 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 <laughs> now, the whole Kickstarter thing is really cool because, uh, you know, it's you really see the community aspect of, of being in a, a community on Long Island. Um, <clears throat> we've gotten a lot of support from a lot of friends, you know, uh, from the craft beer, um, fr- from our scene, you know. Yeah. And... And it's, it's it's cool to kind of quantify that. You know, you can see it, you know, in dollars and cents. Which is kind of weird, but it's cool. Um, but yes, so check it out and um, and help us out and and spread it around too, because that's um, that's been a huge help. Um, yeah. Just having friends and family and strangers, um, you know, telling other people what we're doing. Um, and we also have an awesome video on there, so, um... Yeah, the video's can, really funny. It's good, You too. can watch our awesome video, and honestly, if not, that's at least worth, like, a $10 donation right there. Yeah, it's good. It's a good video. Yeah. Hi, this is Matthew Spitz. And this is Lori Spitz. And we're and Mustache, Mustache Brewing, Brewing Company. Company. And, and you're, you're listening, listening to, to the Beer Amigos. Amigos. And as always, we are back! So what are we doing right now, Mike? We're actually um, drinking a beer by the Great South Bay Brewery. Um, as previously mentioned on the Beer Amigos, we are having the Marauder Bourbon Barrel Age Scotch Ale, homegrown on our Long Island in Bayshore, New York. Bayshore, New York, baby. Trev, what do you uh, feel about this beer? Ha! Don't even think about turning your back on Marauder, or you'll be sorry. I express my love to Marauder. And the Great South Bay guys. <laughs> yeah, Marauders are my favorite beers they make. Yeah. Remember when I initially was like, you know, when when they were first like kind of rolling out, I was uh-huh. like, Trav, it's all about Marauder. <laughs> it's all about Marauder. I had it at TJ Finley's when Great South Bay celebrated their uh, one year anniversary. Um, they had that on tap along with every other beer they brew. And it was the first pint of beer I had. And I just remember taking that first sip and being like, oh, man, <laughs> this is so good. <laughs> You know, what I love about Great South Bay, and I don't know if I've actually mentioned this on the podcast before, I think they find that perfect balance between brewing beers that anyone can enjoy and brewing beers that, you know, true beer geeks can enjoy. I think they've uh, mastered, you know, the idea of what a sessionable beer should be. But they always kind of have their, like, little... They toe the line. Yeah, they have that their little angle, you know, and don't get me wrong, Marauder, I'm not considering a sessionable beer, but I'm just saying that they... Yeah, I'm I'm a, I'm a fan. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's essentially what I'm saying, and I, I respect the fact that they're able again to really target the sessionable beer drinker and the beer geek beer drinker at the same time, which I think is really important for uh, you know for for brewing companies. Um, we live you know in an era where there's a lot of people who still want to drink easy easy to drink beers. I think they tap in that market, and then there's beer geeks like you and I who really want something that isn't quite uh, you know what we're having on a day to day basis, and I think they. Uh, do that quite fine <laughs> as well. This beer comes in at 10% ABV as a full malt flavor. A lot of caramel sweetness. I definitely get that. And uh, absolutely bourbon notes because it's, you know, bourbon barrel age. Yeah. And um, I find this extremely easy to drink being uh, 10% 
ABV. I don't know, I don't know if you agree, but it's. I mean, maybe that's due to it just tasting so good. <laughs> I, I've kind of been drinking this like kind of as the show has been going. To be honest with you, I'm not, I'll give you guys a little insight. I've been drinking this as we've been recording, um, and I'm, I'm feeling kind of buzzed actually. <laughs> really, I'm, I'm. Well, I did eat uh, basically half a pizza pie before you showed up, so I I'm eat, okay at the moment. I ate nothing. <laughs> Do not drink Marauder on an empty stomach. That's why Travis has the big belly. He told the pizza. That's <laughs> true. Such a fatty. <laughs> um, but, but wow, but yeah, but for 10% ABV, um, I find it's very easy to drink. And that's actually something I like about it too. The fact that it could be so, you know, so intriguing, so interesting, and so uh, so delicious, but being easy to drink is something that uh, I'm quite attracted to. Yeah, absolutely. And it's been, you know, it's been warming to its uh, recommended drinking temperature yeah. as, you know, as the show has been, as we've been recording this episode. So Yeah, and I, I have to say, it actually, and truthfully, it's tasting even better to me now than it did when we took it out of the refrigerator. I absolutely agree, because it's, it's approaching the recommended drinking temperature, Trev. Yeah. Next up, uh, we're going to have another beer. Violet! You're turning Violet, Violet! <laughs> <laughs> we're here now, and we are tasting... Snozberry Stout. Snozberry. By Great Salad Bay Brewery. So take your sip, Mike. Once again, we're lying. We've been drinking this for a while. <laughs> <laughs> we're illusionists. If anybody ever does a behind the scenes of the Beer Amigos, they're going to realize uh, there's a lot of fibbing that goes on. <laughs> it would be so funny, though, because we just die for like <laughs> endless amounts of time. <laughs> Our reactions to the beer are sincere, but usually we say... Now we just started drinking. Meanwhile, we were excited to drink this beer two hours ago, so we opened it two hours we ago. We cracked that small bitch open. <laughs> <laughs> so Snozberry Stout, according to the bottle and according to the taste, um, is an American milk stout. It's 4.2% ABV. It has a low bitterness of 18 IBUs. Grains used are chocolate malt and roasted barley, and it is brewed with Fugles hops. So what do you think, Mike? I definitely get like that roastiness on the nose. I know that you, um, well, although we're just trying this beer right now for the first time. Yeah, wink, wink. I just opened it. <laughs> just cracked it open. I know that you said you got a lot of the uh, the sweetness of the berries. I get tons of sweetness. Um, as I was just saying to Mike, I work next to the Whole Foods in Jericho, and I'm big on buying those naked drinks. <laughs> you know, those uh, 100% fruit juice drinks. And I've often bought... Uh, the berry antioxidant drinks, and it has a similar taste to me. So, yeah, I'm definitely picking up on all the berries used in this beer. Yeah, um, for me, it's kind of a a new combination, I guess, in regards to that sweetness um, associated with a stout. Oh, definitely, definitely, and extremely light, um, extremely sessionable. It's it's I say it's essentially the complete opposite of the Marauder. <laughs> yeah. Which is nice. Again, as I was saying earlier, I think Great South Bay has found that nice balance between making sessionable beers and making uh, beers that the beer geek can enjoy. Trav, I think we should revisit the Marauder and give it a formal reviewed rating. I think it's time for... Beer Review! Beer Review! Beer Review! Beer review. We haven't done this in a while, so just to reiterate, on a scale of 1 to 5 Pistol Pete's, one being unfavorable, five being phenomenal. We give the Great South Bay Brewery Marauder Bourbon Barrel Age Scotch Ale four and a half pistol peats. This is Rick Sabatka from Great South Bay Brewery, and you are listening to the Beer Amigos. Oh, Great South Bay. You really make my day Your tasty, tasty beers They give me such cheer So now I sing to you A song about your brews Oh, Great South Bay You really make my day I want your snaggle tooth stout Inside of my mouth For a pint of your massive IPA Even $500 I would pay Your Robert Moses Pale Ale It alone would set my boat a sail I want your blonde ambition While my wife is in the kitchen Cooking Cause we all know a woman's place is in the kitchen, right? I'm kidding 
I'm kidding! Oh, great South Bay, you really make my day. Your tasty, tasty beers, they give me such cheer. So now I sing to you a song about your brews. Oh, great South Bay, you really make my day. Oh, great South Bay, you really make my day. Your tasty, tasty beers, they give me such cheer. So now I sing to you a song about your brews. Oh, great South Bay, you really make my day. Yay! Oh, great South Bay. Really make my day. This is Phil Ebel from Great South Bay Brewery, and you're listening to the Beer Amigos. In addition to all the great events that were mentioned at the beginning of our show, here's some more upcoming featured events. Obviously, Friday, May 11th through Sunday, May 20th is Long Island Craft Beer Week. For more information on Long Island Craft Beer Week, visit longislandcraftbeerweek.com. On Saturday, May 12th, Breakfast with the Beer Amigos. That's us. That's us. Um, Featuring breakfast burritos from Bubba's Burrito Bar. Champagne crafted exclusively for this event by our friend Bobby Rodriguez of the Long Island Beer and Malt Enthusiast. This event starts at 10 a.m. Pajamas are not encouraged, but your attendance is. On Saturday, May 12th, Dave, our good friend Dave from Bellport Cold Beer and Soda, opens up The Vault. Dave's known for really holding on to some beers and making great events out of them, and I'm pretty sure he's going to unveil some of them that day. On Tuesday, May 15th, is the Golden Tap Awards Gala at the Bolton Center for the Performing Arts in Bayshore, New York. That starts at 6 p.m. For more information, visit golden-tap.com. Hey, Mike, who's presenting at the Golden Tap Awards? Oh, those, those, those rascally beer amigos. <laughs> so we'll see you guys there. On Saturday, May 19th, at the Bellport Cold Beer and Soda in Bellport, New York, Our friend Dave is running a mix of six sale. Build your own six packs starting at six bucks up. This includes some hard to find beers. On Thursday, June 7th is the 5th annual Bellport Charity Beer, Wine, and Food event. This is at the Bellport Country Club in Bellport, New York. The event is $45 and runs from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. For more information, visit bellportcharitybeertasting.com. Looking ahead a little further, on Saturday, August 11th, is the North Fork Craft Beer Barbecue and Wine Festival, located at the Martha Clara Vineyard in Riverhead, New York. For more information on this event, visit NorthForkCraftBeerFestival.com. And as always, visit LongIslandBeerEvents.com for any additional events. So it seems like we're wrapping up Episode 9. Yeah, man, it was a fun one, for sure. It was a good one. It's uh, hard to imagine that uh, come a month from now, we are going to be going into Episode 10, Double Digits, baby! Double Digits! Woo! There's no looking back now, Mike, is there? Not at all. So for more information on The Beer Amigos, please visit TheBeerAmigos.com. You can find us on Facebook at The Beer Amigos. You can email us at TheBeerAmigos at gmail.com. You can find us on Twitter at, at The Beer Amigos. And uh, we look forward to seeing you at uh, all the events, and we definitely look forward to seeing you at the Long Island Craft Beer Week events. Yeah, absolutely. Can't wait for it. Super pumped. <laughs> totally stoked, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so until next time, bring the noise and adios, <laughs> amigos! Thanks for listening. We are the Beer Amigos. We like beer. We are amigos. And that's why we call ourselves the Beer Amigos. We are the Beer Amigos. We like beer. We are amigos. And that's why we call ourselves. Amigos